Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. So we're over here on the workbench, and this week's gonna be a bit different because I was on vacation this week, and uh, I didn't really get a chance to work on any new designs that I have in mind. So why don't I grab this off the shelf? This is something I did uh, three or four years ago, and it's a case for a scale calibration weight set. Uh, it's a seven piece set, I guess eight if you count the tweezers, which did come with it. And by the way, the reason for the tweezers is on these calibration weights, you don't want to touch them with your fingers. Just touching them with your fingers, the oil from your fingers is enough to throw off the weight of these. So you actually pick them up with the tweezers and set them down on the scale that you want to calibrate um, with the tweezers. Uh, they came in a Ziploc bag. Uh, they were cheap, I'm not complaining uh, for how they were packaged, but uh, very difficult to get them, get the one that you want in and out of the Ziploc bag without touching them. You know, it was a small bag that was just big enough for everything to fit in. Um, and second problem, they're calibrated weights. Uh, I don't know how, just how accurate they are given the, the cost. I, I want to say this set might, was maybe $15 to $20. So I don't expect them to be, you know, 99.99999% accurate. They're probably close enough for, you know, calibrating a home scale. But still, uh, the mass of these, you know, the two biggest ones are 100 grams and 50 grams. They're big enough that these guys knocking into each other in the bag. Uh, a chip could possibly get knocked off, even if it's just a piece of the chrome on here, uh, and throw the weight off. So I designed this case, and the depth on here of the different parts uh, changes so that uh, when this is screwed shut, uh, this is threaded on the side here, uh, the lid keeps everything in place. From the tiniest one in here, which is this guy here, to the 100 gram weight over here, which is pretty much the full depth of the case. Uh, everything fits in here and is retained by the lid when the lid is screwed in place, including uh, the tweezers themselves. The tweezers actually sit just slightly proud of the case. And in fact, you can see some evidence of that on the lid here. If I get the light just right, you can see a uh, mark on here in the case from it rubbing against the tweezers, and that's fine. Um, the idea is just that uh, there's not enough movement on any one of these weights that it can lift up and fall out of its spot. It's captured by the lid when it's flipped upside down. So I said I needed your help. Well, what I need your help with is the lid. Uh, I printed this on the textured uh, plate when Prusa first came out with it, or shortly after they first came out with it. Because uh, I, I thought it'd be neat to get this, uh, since I had to print it uh, on the bed down this way, uh, you know, to not have supports on this entire surface here. Um, I thought it'd be cute and get that texture um, from the sheet, which actually came out really nice, but I tried to put lettering on it as well, and you can see that didn't come out so nice. So I can't think of a way to really salvage the lid. Uh, you know, I, I've left it this way for years. At the end of the day, it's a scale calibration weight set case. It doesn't need to be perfect, or does it? Um, I do I do tend to obsess with stuff like this, uh, even if it's something I only use like twice a year. It is just nice to get it perfect. Um, and uh, never really been happy with the lettering on this. Um, so curious to hear your ideas of how potentially I could still use this and fix it in some fashion, um, covering up that ugly lettering, uh, or design ideas for, you know, just reprinting this. I think so far the best idea I've had uh, just in prepping for the video, thinking about it, was maybe printing this um, with a recessed area that would have some supports. The surface finish wouldn't matter because that recessed area that could be, you know, it could be an oval, could be a rectangular, would then have another piece that's printed in the opposite orientation so that the, the surface that you're seeing is the top of the print that gets pressed down into place. So maybe if there's a one millimeter recess, um, the height of the, the insert is one millimeter, but it's half a millimeter everywhere, and then the other half a millimeter is the raised lettering inside the, uh, the inset. Um, yeah, that's one idea. I'm curious to hear what you guys have for ideas, or maybe even a way to fix the lid that it doesn't look so ugly. What would happen is the textured surface, the adhesion for at least PLA, uh, isn't as good on it as it is on a smooth plate, and some of the small features and letters, they just didn't stick to the bed, and it just kind of turned into a mess. And anytime you do lettering that's face down in the bed like this, uh, you're asking the printer to bridge over um, the you know sort of airspace that's there for the letter. It never looks great anyway. Um, I've got a couple other prints where it's worked better because the lettering is small. But combination of the 
textured plate plus the size of these letters, well, you can see it looks pretty bad. So let me see if I can dig up the design for this um, and I'll show it to you. But before we do that, let me show you actually what you use these guys for. All right, I moved the camera up so that hopefully we can fit more into the shot. Uh, got a number of scales here. This is a freebie from stamps.com when I signed up a while ago. And you really want to turn a scale on when you set it down on the surface that you're measuring from. Uh, that tears the scale or zeroes the scale. It's got this one. This one I purchased from Amazon um, for this one I keep where I ship packages. Set this one to grams. Kitchen scale. And then I have, this is the probably the most precise one I have. This one also only goes up to 100 grams. Um, and this is the only one I think that I can actually calibrate. In addition to tearing it at zero, um, I can calibrate with a 100 gram weight on this guy as well. So if I take our 50 gram weight, but this one is super hard to read in this light on the camera. I can see it with my eyes a lot better, but that's reading right at 50 grams. 50 grams. Forty nine point nine five. This one's actually this one should be a bit closer, but sometimes just the airflow in the room can mess with this one. Let me. Uh, oh, you know what? Looks like we're not teared. There we go. Forty nine point nine nine. And this last one only reads in ounces, but we're reading 1.8 ounces. Let's switch the units on this guy. Yep, and sure enough, that's 1.8. Um, you always want to make sure you tear your scale. And the, it's a useful feature because I'll give you an example. Let's say we were going to weigh something that was messy uh, or loose, maybe rice or something like that. And we didn't want to mess up the scale. You can put like a bowl or a dish on the, the, uh, the scale and hit the tear button, then it'll zero it with that on there. We'll change back to grams here. And see that's still going to weigh 50 grams. Um, and now we would be at a negative number if we took this off. In fact, actually that gives me an idea. I bet you. Give me a second. Alright, so I've got all the scales stacked up. All of them are reading zero because I've teared each one with the weight of the scales above it on them. And if we drop 50 grams on the one on the top, we should read 50 on everything. 49.98, 50 grams, 1.7. So that's up. It's flipping between 1.7 and 1.8, and we're still reading 50 grams at the bottom. All right, let me go see if I can dig up the design files for this case and the uh, the lid. I'm gonna see if there's anything I missed from the design. All right, and I did find the design files for this. Uh, it looks like I designed this back in 2019. So I think I said three or four years. It's pretty close. And uh, the lid is in here as well. And you can see what the lettering should have looked like on this. Um, so uh, I think I started out with an open SCAD or open SCAD design that provided just the outer elements here of the uh, the screw on top and the screw on bottom part and probably the knurling as well uh, and then what I did is I just uh, filled in the top uh, and then essentially extruded down the different shapes that I needed so that all of the different scale weights sat at the same height inside the box so that they were retained by the lid um, if I remember correctly, I think I did two prints until I was happy with the fit of, of everything. I think the scale weights, yeah, they're pretty straightforward. They're easy to measure. Uh, the tweezers were a bit tricky just because it's hard to imagine how something that is curved uh, and moves uh, is going to sit down in there. Uh, and I think I also, on the second go, enlarged the, uh, the, the recess here for your thumb and forefinger to drop in to grab those guys out. So not a terribly complex design. Um, looking at this, a lot of times I look at my older designs and I think, geez, I, I wish I had done this. Um, really the only thing I can think of that I might have done different on this one is maybe a small bevel uh, at the top of these. It's a real hard edge right now. Might help to have just a little tiny bit of a bevel 
at the top to help those guys align and drop in, but I can't say it's ever been really an issue either. Um, the one thing that I've really had a challenge with is the, you know, the piece that I asked for your help on earlier, which is the lid. Uh, you really got to print this guy in this orientation with this face down here on the bed. Um, it's not even just not wanting the mess of supports on the inside. I mean, I do want this to be a smooth surface because it's rotating and tightening uh, against what's on the top of this case. So if it was a really rough surface, it probably wouldn't tighten down smoothly. But because this is threaded, uh, you really have a mess of supports trying to get underneath uh, these threads. Uh, it would just be, it'd be a giant mess to clean up. So it's got to really print in this orientation. Uh, again, the idea I had was just getting rid of the text as, it, as you see it, having either uh, an oval or a rectangular uh, cutout on the top of this that was maybe a millimeter deep. Uh, we would print supports there. The surface finish wouldn't really matter because then I'd have a matching piece uh, that was printed with the, uh, the lower face that you wouldn't see after it was pressed into place uh, on here. And then maybe have raised lettering on that that still sat uh, below or even with the rest of the surface of this. Uh, in which case we could still do, I guess, the textured finish on the top so that we had, you know, sort of the, just the nice aesthetic on the overall flat surface. So let me know what you guys are thinking for that. Uh, if I get some good suggestions, maybe we'll tackle that next week. We'll take a look at a couple different alternatives uh, for what this lid uh, would look like if we improved it. Because, again, I know it's just a case for a scale calibration weight set that gets used once or twice a year. But uh, never really happy with how this top looked. Let's, uh, let's, let's do something better. I, I, I know you guys are going to throw me some awesome suggestions down in the comments. Guys, as always, thanks for hanging out with me in the shop this week. Uh, taking a look at this video. I really appreciate you know the time everyone takes to watch these. Um, I know there's other stuff you could be doing, other channels you could be watching. Um, if there's one more favor I could ask, if you liked this video, take a second, hit that like button. Really helps out a, a channel like my, my own or any other small channels that you guys watch that are trying to grow. Um, tells YouTube that you know, it wasn't a waste of your time, you enjoyed the video, and uh, might show it to some new people you know, that just got into the hobby. They're still kind of stuck in that stage where they're just printing benchies and uh, stuff on Thingiverse that they find. They haven't really dipped their toe into the, the waters of designing their own stuff yet, which is really what keeps people in this hobby. Uh, I know there's a, a, you know, a lot of people that'll just print, you know, uh, you know, minifigs, stuff like that. And nothing against that. I think that's also another great use of this hobby. But it, it always saddens me when you see people that, you know, they're just downloading, you know, some cool little trinket that they, you know, enjoy for five seconds or that the kids throw out. And, uh, you know, they just never get beyond that stage. So if you know somebody like that, or if you've got any place that, uh, you know, you talk to people uh, that you could share the channel with, uh, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, and guys, if you really like this video, and this is your first time here, I do a new video like this every single Friday. So if you really enjoyed this, hit that subscribe button. Guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday.